Hello and welcome to Pen Tester Academy. My name is Rick Farina, and today we will be using mana to attack TTLS MS Chat V2. As usual, please start at pentesteracademy.com and click on Member Access. From here, access Attack Defense Labs. Scroll down along the left hand side until you find Wi Fi Attack Defense and Live Cracking. Today, attacking TTLS MS Chat V2. Please select the server closest to you, in my case US East, and hit Run. While that's loading up, let's take a look at what we're doing today. We have two dual band Wi Fi interfaces, and we have a client in the vicinity probing for a WPA2 enterprise network configured to use TTLS MS Chat V2. That's tunneled TLS with MS Chat V2 inside. Objective is to use host APD mana to create a WPA2 enterprise network and retrieve that user's credentials. We've also got air crack and a sleep on the machine to crack the credentials when we get them, and a password file that hopefully contains the password we're looking for, as well as a certificates directory called certs that contains some pre-generated certificates for the TLS. So let's jump into our lab. Once the lab is up and running, we can run airmonng, check out our interfaces, and where we can run iwdev. In this case, we've got two Wi-Fi interfaces, just like promised. So we'll use one for the host APD mana and one for monitor mode to see what's out in there. So IP link set WLAN zero down. iwdev WLAN zero set type monitor. And then IP link set WLAN zero up. Now that we've got it in monitor mode, we can run arrow dump ng band abg wlan zero so we can scan all the bands and see what we have available to us in the airspace right now there are no visible clients but we do have a nice wi-fi uh, sorry we have no visible access points we have one nice client looking for a consulate and we will grab that ssid and we'll start seeing what else we've got ready to go so on this box, we also have the 100 common passwords that we were promised and a folder called certs, which contains all of the certs necessary for host APD to do tunneled TLS. So we'll open up mana.conf and make ourselves a nice config file. Start off as usual with an interface. In this case, we'll use WLAN 1 since WLAN 0 is already in monitor mode. SSID will be copy and pasted from our arrow dump window. And then we've got our standard host APD boilerplate stuff. Host a uh, hardware mode equals G, channel equals one, auth algs equals three, WPA equals three. This stuff's all available in the example config file, but you kind of get used to it after a little while. WPA key MGMT equals WPA EAP is going to be an IEEE 802.1x network equals one. And we're gonna use the internal EAP server, so EAP server equals one. To do that, we're gonna set up a user file, EAP user file equals host apd EAP user file. And then we're gonna throw the certificates in there, ca cert equals root certs ca.pem server cert equals root certs server.pem private key for that cert is root certs server.key and the dh file is root certs dhparam.pem okay that's all your host apd config all of the regular basic stuff to to load up a network and let a user connect but we need a little more than that if we're going to crack that user's credentials. We want to enable some MANA specific features. In this case, we're going to do MANA WPE or Wireless Ponage Edition, which turns on the basic set of uh, MANA patches that does the man in the middle and drops the credentials into the log file. We also want to do MANA EAP success. This is going to tell the client after they send their username and password that it was successful. 
We have no way to validate their password or any of the credentials whatsoever. So we're just gonna send back a status success and say, no, it's totally cool. No problems at all. You definitely can log into this network. Uh, last but not least is mana cred out. We're gonna give it a file host apd.creds to creds to dump the information that it logs into. So the main log will have all of the usernames and passwords or usernames and hashes uh, streaming through it, but this is gonna create a file specifically to contain just that information so that if we have a lot of users in the airspace or something like that, we don't get overwhelmed with the amount of logging. Now we're gonna create the file host apd heap user. This is the user specific configuration file, the users being the people logging into the .1x server. For this, we're gonna do star, that's everybody. And then we're gonna start defining what they're allowed to use. So peep, ctls, tls, md5, gtc. Basically, we're gonna enable all of the types that are common to try to give those users a chance to log in. And then we're gonna configure the tunneled information and we're gonna allow ttls, ms, chap, v2. We're going to allow ms chap v2 md5 gtc ttls password authentication protocol ttls challenge authentication protocol ttls ms chap with a shared secret doesn't really matter we're going to allow basically as much as possible to try to let those users connect Again, this information is available in the host APD example files to figure out what all of this means, but more or less what we're doing is just enabling the kitchen sink. Allow the user to auto negotiate with the EAP server what it wants to use to connect as, and then pass us whatever credentials they prefer. You can also make a smaller version of this file that only handles things that are either unencrypted or weak hashes to allow the password cracking to go a lot faster. Uh, in this case, we've got a small dictionary and hopefully it's already in there. So we're just going to allow everything under the sun and try to get that user to connect to us. Once we've made those files, we're going to load up post apd mana and pass the config file to it. In this case, there's a typo in host apd heap user. It is definitely not time to live chap. It is tunneled tls chap ttls. And there we go. Credentials will be captured and written to host APD creds. AP enabled. Now we patiently wait. And here's our user. So right away we've got a user connected, Janice. And as you can see, it's pass out a bunch of information. Uh, mana, eep phase 0 and non, eep phase 1 Janice. So in the outside of the tunnel, before it creates a TLS tunnel, it's passing a username of a non. Once the TLS tunnel is established, it's passing a username of Janice. And then we've got a nice hash in different formats to crack. We've got a format for Asleep, John the Ripper, and Hashcat. John the Ripper and Hashcat are both accelerated password crackers. They can use GPUs and things like that to get a lot faster password cracking. Uh, in this case, we don't really need that because we've got a very small dictionary and we're quite hopeful that what we're looking for is in there. So we're gonna copy that. And we're gonna check Asleep is working. Yes, indeed. So we've got a config line for asleep. We also have an important thing missing from that config line, which is w dictionary file. So we want to actually copy and paste and then add w and our dictionary file. And what that's going to do is very quickly run through our dictionary because it's quite small. And we're going to find out that Janice's password is bubbles1. Okay. In addition to having that information right here in the main log scroll, we can also find it in our file host apd creds, but this time it's only the usernames and credentials that we need. It's not the whole logging and, and all that information that gets lost. So if you have lots of users, this config line is a lifesaver that dumps everything to one file that you can go back and look at. If you're trying to parse all of the host apd output, it gets quite painful. So let's take this back and see if we've done this right. Go to verify flags. The username is Janice, and Janice's password is Bubbles1. And there we go. So that's pretty much all there is to it.
make sure you stop your lab. And remember, if you didn't test it yourself, it doesn't work.